Good afternoon, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper.io and I'm here today with Colette Nataf, the CEO of Lightning AI. Good afternoon, Colette. Good afternoon, Mark, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us today. How are things in your neck of the, neck of the woods? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I'm actually up in my house in Tahoe right now, so enjoying the, the beautiful spring weather and the sunshine up here. That's good, and I'm enjoying the beautiful spring weather down in San Francisco, your, your other hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Sure, absolutely. So uh, my background actually started in math and data science. I have an undergraduate and a graduate degree um, studying statistics. But I left that and found my initial job in marketing. So kind of made the transition from data science over to um, Something, uh, a discipline that I really believe uses a lot of data science, even if the marketers don't quite know it yet, um, and run user acquisition uh, at a variety of companies um, like Microsoft and Expedia. And now I run marketing for a lot of different companies at Lightning AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, actually, marketing is a lot of data science, and uh, it, it's it, in becoming more and more uh, data driven as, as the years go by. I can tell you that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the more digital marketing happening, there's so much math that, that's involved. And uh, it's, it's really important that marketers not only understand it, but are able to analyze it and then make decisions uh, off of that data as well. Yes, I agree. So what has been your experience with remote employment, both as a remote employee and employer? Yeah, so we've been around for about three years and we've been fully remote for two. Uh, my experience, I would say in the beginning, it is not always obvious how to run a remote team. Um, one of the reasons why we became remote was just because some of our employees moved. Uh, mm -hmm. They moved, we didn't, we wanted to retain them. And so, you know, by just natural occurrences, we became a remote workforce. Uh, and I think initially really our goal was how do we maintain a office environment when you're working remote. Um, so we set up like Zoom conference calls with our remote employees and you know we would be able to facilitate kind of like off the cuff conversations. Um, and that went on for about a month before everybody was like just completely burnt out of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and so really what we learned is that remote work is different. Mm -hmm. uh, the style of it is different. The personalities who are going to flounder or flourish are, are different. Um, and we, we took a step back and said, you know, we want to be able to allow people to be remote and we need to figure out how to do this. Um, so we totally switched uh, and went from, I, I would say, more micromanaging to, to really letting people work independently. Uh, and I found the people who want to be remote workers do better in that position anyway. Um, you know, it's interesting now with so many people working remote from our shelter in place orders, I think one of the surprises is that, uh, you know, you can't work all the time. <laughs> and um, especially when, when you're not in an office environment, I think it's really important that uh, you have the flexibility to work around your schedule, whatever that may be. So um, we totally flipped our, our work structure. Um, we went from having those Zoom calls all the time to uh, having quarterly planning sessions where we really do all of our brainstorming. And then we create Kanban style workflows and just let people kind of self-manage. Uh, and that's worked really well. Mm. Um, it doesn't work really well for everyone. So um, there are definitely some people who need more structure, um, but what I found personally is that I as a manager do much better with the types of employees who, who can kind of self-lead. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a lot of stress relief actually, having, having people who can manage themselves, who can kind of work in that way, um, and who are excited about the potential to not have someone you know, checking on them and saying like, what are you doing every single day? Um, so it's been, it's been overall a really positive experience, uh, which is why we're still doing it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's great to be able to find employees, not just in the Bay area, but really all over the country. Yeah. And I find that technical people have a tendency to like remote work more than others. They, 
they, mm -hmm. they like to know what you want, what you want expected of them and when, and they usually deliver. Yeah, you know, I, I, <laughs> when people say it, it sounds so simple, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but getting that mentality into your head as a manager, especially when, you know, you're kind of new to management life, it can be really challenging. Um, and I think especially that, that jump from hiring like entry level employees to more senior level employees, um, entry level, you know, they might need that kind of handholding, mm -hmm. right. uh, and they might not be suited for remote work right off the gate. Um, but more senior employees, especially people who are coding, uh, they really want large blocks of uninterrupted time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that, that remote work really facilitates in a way that having an office just doesn't, doesn't allow for. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been there when you're doing something and you're like trying to debug something and you're this close and all of a sudden someone comes up and taps you on the shoulder and like, oh, can you help me with this? And like. <laughs> You got to go back and reset it all up again. I know. I, I, I'm a former developer, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, people joke about how developers like to code in the middle of the night, but, mm. you know, we say like, this is why, like, this mm -hmm. is why people code at night because it's the only time where there's no one around, no one's going to interrupt you. Um, you know, for a while I've been told people like, just turn off, turn off Slack, turn off your notifications on your computer, like just get things, mm -hmm. you know, done. Um, and now we're a little bit more flexible because we have like yeah. our basic product out, but especially in the beginning, sometimes you just need people working. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It, it, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so we could probably share some stories about that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so what do you think is the future of remote employment and what can you, what do you think could be done differently to make it more efficient? Yeah, um, it's really interesting. I'm going to call every, uh, we have like a weekly lunch call with marketing directors. And it's really interesting to hear people who are leading teams of remote workers who have been kind of thrown into it. Um, so I think a lot of people are making the same kind of mistake that I that I made for it right off the bat, which is like, okay, how do I turn remote work? into an office and somebody told me like they were they they were forcing people to do like happy hours and lunches and it's like man every remote worker is going to hate that so much mm -hmm. um and i mean i think that's true if you're a person who's selecting to be a remote worker but i think it's even more true now if you have mm -hmm. you know kids at home or you know something going on at home and you're mm -hmm. supposed to be like on a lunch meeting with your boss I don't know it sounds hard mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I, I think that what will end up happening is kind of a general re relaxation of a lot of those things I think that you know companies that are going to thrive in remote work are going to need to learn how to uh, create boundaries and let people work within those boundaries instead of mandating something. One of the other, one of the other managers said, Oh, I'm going to give people like the last two hours off on Friday. And I was like, your employees are not working the last two hours on Friday afternoon. <laughs> I know, <laughs> they're on, but it's, they're not working. <laughs> yeah, you just make it official. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I joked that we started summer hours the year that we went remote. We started summer hours, which is like Friday afternoon. Everybody gets off and we just never went back because it doesn't affect productivity. No one's working on Friday afternoons anyway. Right. So, yeah, people don't have to pretend like they're working on Friday <laughs> afternoons, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. So, so what is the story behind Lightning AI? Uh, what's your product and who do you, uh, who do you help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all great questions. So the story behind it. Um, so as I mentioned, I, my background's in data science and I moved over to marketing. Uh, and what I found is that I was completing a lot of the same tasks over and over and over again. So whether it was looking at um, what are the conversion rates over time for different marketing campaigns or what is our LTV to CAC, um, whatever it was, I was doing the same thing over and over and over every single day. Uh, and so my, my goal um, became, how do I automate this? How do I make life easier for marketers? And how do I enable people to make better decisions when computers really can and should be making those decisions for individuals? Um, so out popped Lightning AI. Mm -hmm. um, we are a software that has a number of different applications for marketers, specifically um, in terms of building and automating campaigns on Facebook. Uh, our customers range a lot and are changing now, especially in the past like month and a half um, as a result of COVID. So we were working with a lot of um, small e-commerce businesses, Shopify uh, customers. We saw that they had a, a really large drop in conversion rates. 
um, with the financial <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. drop as well. Um, so they pulled back a lot and now we're getting a whole bunch of new customers, which has been exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we, we primarily right now are working with B2B SaaS. Um, it's still seeing conversion rates, which is great. Um, and a lot of mobile gaming. Uh, so anything that has price points in the 99 cent <laughs> range, mm -hmm. people are still making those purchases. Uh, and that's actually um, doing really well, especially in places that have shelter in place orders. Um, so a lot of mobile games, uh, a lot of B2B SaaS, um, some education. We're working with some charitable organizations. So that's been interesting too. But Every day we get new customers and it's exciting to see kind of who, who comes in and uh, who's taking advantage of the opportunities that we can provide for them. Yeah, I would think really gaming, 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 gaming the, the increase, increase rate. rate. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. I mean, I can't give specifics, but some of the games that we work with have like five to 10x their budgets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. And especially right now in marketing, the cost of serving ads is, is greatly declining. We're seeing an increase in supply and a decrease in demand from advertisers. So all of that means low prices. Uh, so having big budget increases means there's a lot of people who are seeing those ads. Yes, for sure. Um, so it sounds like you incorporated a, a remote programming or remote work in general about two years ago. How did you incorporate that when you first started? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, I mean, again, it started because <laughs> somebody moved. So <laughs> we kind of <laughs> um, And from there, uh, we ended up hiring a bunch of contractors kind of around the same time. Um, so those were remote. We hired them just from Upwork. Uh, and they just kind of stuck. Um, I found that we were more, we were more efficient. We were more productive as a software company when we weren't all kind of shoved in an office together and we could actually get some thinking time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been, that's been really effective for us and it's worked really well. Um, we do still uh, have kind of quarterly brainstorm meetings where, where we plan for the, for the upcoming quarter. So that is still kind of in person, but um, mostly we can do everything virtually wow. um, and that's been really that's been really nice i think it works out really well for for the people who choose to live this lifestyle and do you actually have an office still no we're office free i have an office uh, attached to my garage so <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like another company that started what was that company? hp if i remember right right <laughs> <laughs> they did okay. There's a lot of companies that do it. And um, I think there's a lot of people who really enjoy the flexibility of, of this type of lifestyle. Yeah, very good. So uh, the current situation with the ongoing pandemic has forced a lot of companies to go remote, something you had already done. But was there any roadblocks or challenges that you didn't foresee when this came? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, for us in our business, you know, there were, there were a lot of, <laughs> there was a lot of customer turnover. Um, I mean, our customer base has, it feels like it's completely flipped. It hasn't, but mm -hmm. it kind of feels like it with the, with the people who are writing in and asking questions. Um, so it's definitely really interesting to see how it has affected marketing spend and marketing budgets. Um, in terms of remote work, I mean, we were already pretty flexible, but I think now we like really know each other's children. So. <laughs> 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 <And their pets. laughs> pets, I think we, pets, we mostly knew already, but, um, mm -hmm. definitely the kid, I mean, you know, when you can't send your kid to daycare, right. they're going to be at home with you. Uh, so we've all gotten to, um, meet, meet each other's kids at a new level. Uh, and you know, I think it's really just about flexibility. Like at the end of the day, we, we continue to have the same mentality, which is like, here are the assignments. This is kind of generally when they need to be done and let's just do our best. Mm -hmm. Um, and by having that flexibility and not mandating that people are like online at 2 PM, mm -hmm. um, it allows us to kind of take care of whatever we need while still being productive. Yeah, very good. So there's companies like Gaper that help develop, build, and scale products, especially for startups, and you're still in that startup stage. Mm -hmm. How important do you think this will be going forward when you need to, you know, hire uh, employees or just remote workers, and you, but you need the right person, and you generally need them 
pretty quickly, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it definitely does take a certain personality type to be good at working remotely. Um, you know, I, I think that even the businesses that we work with, sometimes we have calls and people just spend the first like 10 minutes, you know, asking about everything and anything. They just need that human contact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And remote work is not for those types of people. Uh, if you need to be in an office environment, then you have to self-select into, into that. And so, I mean, I do think it's really important that there are both people who are recruiting for those jobs and also people who have kind of like a, a repertoire of, of people who you know are going to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when you're in a startup environment, I don't know what it's going to look like for people who don't have products already, but I can, I can definitely imagine that um, it's going to be crunch time <laughs> for a lot of companies uh, in the very, very short term, um, especially if like they've just raised or if they're looking to go to market kind of right away. Uh, and having having those capabilities and finding the right people is is always really important. You don't want to waste time on somebody who is not is not pulling their weight. Yes, I agree. Well, Colette, thank you very much for your time today. This has been uh, very enlightening, and I hope I wish uh, you and Lightning AI uh, the best of luck in the future. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right, hopefully you get back to San Francisco soon. <laughs> yes. can, it's 75 and sunny today. It's pretty nice. <laughs> I, I know. It's kind of like a love-hate, right? It's like, I'd really like to spend the summer out here, but also it would be nice to be home. Yeah, and I can attest uh, Tahoe is beautiful in the summer, <laughs> even in the winter, especially if you like skiing. <laughs> yes. All right, have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.